and welcome back to a new art journal video. Just like last time I'm doing something a little bit different than my usual art journal videos this time but I still hope you like it. And I'm making a canvas painting today and it's the one you can see here. So if you want to see how I did this then just keep on watching. And I am starting with a thick 12 by 12 canvas and I have picked out a few colors that I will be using. And I'm going to use some different shades of teal and blue together with a little bit of gold. I think the combination of these colors are just so beautiful and since I have decorated my craft space with teal accents I think this painting will look very nice in here somewhere. And the first thing I'm going to do is to add some paper from an old book. This will add a little bit of texture and hopefully some of the text will be visible in the end as well. And I'm tearing the paper into different sizes and adhering it to the canvas using gel medium. And I'm adhering the adhesive both on the back and the front to seal in the paper and make sure that it's really stuck down. If I don't adhere it well it might make the paint fall off from the finished product after a while and I don't really want that to happen. And then when all of the pieces are adhered I'm using my heat gun to speed up the drying process. I don't want to start adding any colors until the medium is completely dried. And then it's time to start adding some colors to this but first I'm going to go over the entire canvas with white gesso and even the edges get a nice even coat of gesso. The gesso will ensure that the paint I add later would stick to the canvas and I do cover the whole canvas with gesso but since I do want some of the text to be visible I'm using a wet baby wipe to take away some of the gesso again. And then it's time to dry the canvas again before I continue. And I've already learned from previous mistakes that things rarely go as planned when you skip the drying process so for this art piece I'm not going to take any chances. And I was about to start adding my colors when I decided that I wanted to have some more texture. So I decided to use my texture paste and this stencil from Prima. And luckily the stencil is also 12 by 12 so all I have to do was place the stencil on the canvas and start adding the paste with a palette knife. And I'm not going to add the paste all over the canvas, just a little bit here and there. And the paste is white, but as you can see here, mine is starting to get a bit blue. And this is due to the fact that I'm a laser crafter and haven't cleaned the stencil since I last used it. And I did know this before I started, but I didn't worry about it since the color on the stencil would match the colors I plan on using on the canvas anyway. And in the end it will just add more interest to the background. And the texture paste needs a little bit of time to dry so I just put it aside for a while and then when it was dry enough for me to touch without smearing it I went ahead and started adding my colors. And the first color I'm using is tumbled glass distress ink and the distress inks have a dabber top but I'm not going to use that instead I'm just pouring some of the ink onto a plate and use my paintbrush to add the paint to the canvas. And this way I can get uneven and visible brush strokes on the canvas and that is exactly the kind of effect that I'm going for. And I'm adding this light color all over the canvas and then I'm drying the paint before I continue with peacock feathers which is a darker color of distress ink. And I don't want this to be all over the canvas so I'm just making a few strokes here and there blending it with the lighter color a little bit for a more smooth transition. And when I'm happy with the blue color it's time to add a little bit of gold so I'm using a smaller paintbrush to make some thin strokes with my gold paint. And of course I was lazy this time and didn't dry the blue layer before I started with the gold. So I ended up mixing it a bit with the blue and it made more of a green color than a gold. So I had to stop what I was doing and use my heat gun to dry the paints after all. Distress inks are very liquid and I wasn't very happy with the thin layers I got with that ink. And I did like the colors but I wanted a thicker paint so I could get more texture to the painting. But I didn't have any colors like this and I had to improvise a bit. And as I've mentioned before, color theory isn't really my strong side and trying to mix colors to produce new ones isn't something I'm very good at. But at this point I didn't have much of a choice. So I had to try it and decided that a dark blue and a yellow should make a dark teal. And to my surprise I was right. The color did end up being a bit too dark though but with a little bit of white to the mix I got a color that I was really happy with. And this paint is much thicker than the distress paint and I could add it to my canvas using a palette knife. So all I did was drag the color onto the canvas in vertical strokes. And then when I was happy with it I did the same thing with a gold color and added it to the canvas as well. And then I dry the canvas with my heat gun again before continuing. At this point I did want to add a little bit more of the lighter colors but they are too transparent to do any difference on top of this dark color. So I decided to try and mix my light blue paint with some of the texture paste and this will give the paint more body and make it more opaque. So I just mixed it all together and added it to the canvas with the palette knife. 
And it didn't really work out as well as I had hoped and I ended up getting a big blob of color at the bottom of the canvas. So before I messed up even more, I gave up and didn't add much more of the mix to the canvas. And in an attempt to cover up my mistake and add a little bit of dark blue to the mix, I went in with some navy blue paint from Making Memories. You know those colors that came out like 10 years ago? I still have mine. And as soon as I started adding this color, I realized that I actually hated the way it looked. That blue kind of took over the whole thing and it really bothered me that the paint was there. So I tried covering it with the distress paint, but that didn't work due to the fact that they were so liquid. So all I could do was make a new mix of my heavy bodied paints and cover up the navy blue I just added. Luckily it worked out just fine and I got rid of the navy and got a darker teal color instead. And then I used the metallic distress paint and pressed the dabber top against the top edge of the canvas. And since the paint is very watery it will run from the top and hopefully make something nice on the canvas. And I did end up pressing the bottom a little bit too much and I think I got more paint on the table behind the canvas than I did on the painting itself. But there is nothing to do about that now and instead of wasting all of that paint I used a large tag to pick some of it up. And then I tried to do the same thing with the light blue distress paints and the lightest one worked just fine. But on the darker of the two the dabber top was a bit dry and I had to press the bottle very hard to get any paint to come out. And the paint kind of came out under the cap instead and I made a complete mess of everything. Luckily the painting was okay and all excess ink just ended up on my hands and on the paint bottle so no worries there. Art is supposed to be messy right? So now after a long video my painting is finally done and all that is left to do is let it dry for a few minutes and then add paint to the edges. And for that I just used my palette knife and whatever paints I had left over. It was a fast and easy way to do it. So that was all for this video. If you liked it then please give it a thumbs up and if you have any questions feel free to comment or send me a message and I will try and answer as good as I can. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you again next time. Bye.